do your research, yep. interview, interview agents, figure out which one that you've got uh, a trust factor with and which ones you think that have the experience that you need to be able to, to make that step because it truthfully is a life journey. And Well, welcome back to another episode of the Bamford & Co. podcast. Once again, I'm joined by my brother, Greg. And today, we're going to talk about the five biggest mistakes buyers make when purchasing a home. <laughs> it's uh, scary. Um, so, I'd say probably... I, I think the number one thing would be starting to look for a house that uh that they can't afford for sure is that a lot of people actually um i i find that people aren't doing the research is that they're not you know looking at their budgets they're not looking at the neighborhoods that they want is that they're just looking at what um, cosmetic features that they like in properties and necess and it's not necessarily the right first steps yeah when it I, comes down to it i believe it it's it and especially in today's market it once you set yourself up for something nicer than what you can afford, um, it, it can be pretty frustrating when when that's not in your wheelhouse anymore. For sure, probably delaying yourself probably two to three months and losing out on a couple good properties and maybe even paying a little bit more for the same property that you if you did all the proper things in the right procedure that you would have got a couple months prior. Yeah, that's a great point. What it, what's the number two? Well. I, well, pre-approval for sure. And yeah. actually not just doing a verbal pre-approval. Is it actually looking at going through, getting your credit reports done? Is it pulling, you know, pulling all those credits, um, going through, getting your, um, you know, your pay stubs, your T4s, um, all those kind of things until people have actually got you locked in as a mortgage rate is that you should not be looking at any homes. Yeah, I Not agree. even online. Really, is it to set that standard? It's to you know to, to get that pre-approval first, and then from there is that then you actually know what you can afford, what you can budget, and that's when you that's where you actually start your your search. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think that too many people go with just that pre-approval that they've just got a phone call from a bank or so forth, and we hear it all the time. Yeah, I'm pre-approved, and then when it comes down to it, they're not ready to put in that offer because the timeline's going to take too long because they still haven't done all the work that they needed to, and and sometimes actually what happens is it takes weeks if not months to be able to get letters from their employer and so forth, and so some of these things are um, unseen like yeah. timelines, but. I mean, these are the things that if you do it ahead of time, then you don't have to worry about it. Because when we're looking at putting in offers, and especially in today's market, we're looking at the shortest timelines for conditions that we possibly can, if we are going to make it conditional. And it's understanding with that mortgage broker what financing uh, is in place and how long it's going to be able to take to get done. So I think that's a, that's a huge one. People handcuff themselves realistically with not having the pre-approval in place is that for an example you know like a lot of our mortgage brokers we're maybe two two days maybe two to three days for a good mortgage get, broker yeah for yeah. a good mortgage broker being fully approved once they've had that approval process once you found that house is that we're getting those those letters back saying fully approved two to three days um when they're not actually doing their pre-approvals their t4s um you know employment verification is that you're you're seven to ten days lucky yeah. to be able to do that right so our negotiating power is is thrown out thrown out the doors a lot of times we're you know five days six days you know uh shorter timelines for conditions to be able to to put these deal to deals together and once you don't have that pre-approval in place is that you're back to being with everybody else that's going to have that 10 to 14 day condition timeline it, here's another issue that i find too is that people say i'm pre-approved and i'm just dealing with just a normal banker and the thing is, like, unless you're dealing with somebody that deals with mortgages on the daily basis and has those relationships and has that buying power, which makes that your mortgage is going to be pushed through faster than anything else, that's a big mistake that we find is just saying, oh, yeah, I'm pre-approved at a bank, but not dealing with the actual licensed mortgage broker for that bank or someone that is, uh, yeah. Yeah. A, we live in a specialist world and we need to be working with those specialists, you right. know, to be able to do it on the timelines that we're looking to meet. Uh, that was well said. <laughs> to, let me finish. <laughs> but is it to meet those timelines so we can actually, you know, work best for you? 
you know so yeah. is it to me that's a that's a big concern um you know i always ask for a letter uh, you know a pre-approval letter and you know and usually it's me phoning the agent the mortgage broker and saying hey guess what like this is where we're looking at is this still feasible you know right. what's our timelines that we need to be able to when we find that right house are you you know, some people are two, three days, some people are a week still. And yeah. it depends on the lenders that they're working with or, or institute that they're working with, right? So that's that's a big one. We all become part of the that buyer's team. Yeah. So the better communication that we have with everybody from from the lender to the home inspector to the, the lawyer and, and so forth, it makes it easier for us to understand what's going on and to be able to solve things ahead of time. So we want to be involved with every step with who have you chosen. And I mean, we're, it's not always who we pick. I mean, we've got suggestions. We've got lots of amazing people that we can refer off to our clients, but it's just working with them so that we're all on the same page. For sure. Yeah, we need that game plan. We need those timelines. We need to be able to, that's going to help us make an educated decision when it, when the time comes. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what's the third most uh, common mistake that, that buyers use out there? I think not using a realtor. Okay. Yeah. And I know and, you're and really good at what you do, Greg, but can you explain <laughs> that a little well, bit more for me? <laughs> I think a lot of times people think that they're going to be able to beat everybody to the market by just seeing new listings that hit it and they're going to phone the listing agent. By the time you phone the listing agent, if it's a good property, the property is usually conditionally sold. Uh, and so or it's got 20 showings lined up for the day and, 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 the, and 10 you, for tomorrow you can't already. Fit in and I mean, we've yeah. had it to where people are frantically trying to be able to even get their own agent in rather than get themselves in. And you're yeah. like, hey, I'm sorry. I just... I mean, unless you're pre-approved, unless you're these things, we're not just going to just start showing the, the property to somebody, right? Um, so I think that finding that professional realtor and, and interviewing them and see what experience they have, especially in today's market, because it, it's different. Like not many people know how to work in today's market. It's moving so fast. We're quite fortunate. And I mean, it's not to, to boost us up, but it, this is how we came into real estate. Yeah. I mean, we used to write offers $50,000 above list price. And by the time our client took possession three months later, it was worth $40,000 more. It's like, this is how we learned how to sell real estate. Yeah. And, and we're also looking at the big picture. We're not just spending people's money to be able to do it. We're looking at the big picture because we're seeing what's coming down the road. Oh, it's amazing. And, and the thing is, once a lot of times we see the numbers like file in, We've only beat out somebody by like four thousand, five thousand dollars. So it's just knowing the experience and so forth to do it, right? Or the condition timelines. That's a big one. I know. Is it like people are always are looking and they're saying, "Well, why can you do this in seven days when other people are doing it in 14? Yeah. And it's like because we got our ducks in a row. Yeah. Right. The other thing that's when when you're not using a realtor and you're phoning maybe the listing agent on the day that it's listed. Um, when you're in a multiple offer situation is that they're in a conflict of interest is it being you know both being in a limited dual agency acting for both the buyer and the seller so yeah. in that exact scenario is that they can't actually tell you what price to put on the paper right and i'll tell you one thing is that you know our experience is that you know goes a long way is that usually we can kind of pinpoint of where that price point is going to be with even looking at comparables right so to me is that that's a that's a big one and i don't think a lot of people actually realize that scenario that they're putting themselves in in that situation and we've been in the business long enough like that you have relationship with other realtors and so they understand you understand the way that they work and which ones kind of do more business and so forth so it's uh it just helps us also then get the i guess our foot in the door if we're trying to negotiate with somebody or at the same time even maybe find stuff that's coming onto the market ahead of time and with that relationship and finding that right realtor right so i guess this is a little bit of a, of a marketing uh point find a realtor but i think it will make you succeed in the long run yeah i think it's also being honest you know like there's nothing you know it's a uh, it's these are the steps that you should be doing with anything you for know, sure. Do yeah. your do your research. Yeah. Interview interview agents. Figure out which one that you've got uh, a trust factor with, and which ones you think that have the experience that you need to be able to to make that step. Because it truthfully is a life journey, and it right now in today's world, it, this is not just finding a property. Like back in the day, you'd start working with somebody. Ninety days later, they'd have possession of their house, and you're moving in. Some clients I'm working with for two years because we're trying to find them that perfect home Specific within today's home, yeah. yeah in today's market. 
So would you say that the the fourth would be picking the wrong agent? I think that you've talked a little bit about that already. Um, you know, what would be kind of some of the things, you know, you mentioned, you know, interviewing agents. What, what would be some of the questions that you would ask some of the agents? Like, is it's not just about how many homes you sold, right? It's kind yeah. of, it's about feeling and having that personal relationship with it. Is that kind of the trust factor that you'd... I'd probably interview them and see what their knowledge is on even neighborhoods, right? Types of properties. What what do they know about new builds compared to used homes? What right. are the things that they're supposed to look for in a property or not look for, right? As like w like when we go through it, we're we're like a home inspector. We pre-inspect every single property. Like we should be able to catch ninety percent of what. Uh, a home inspector should catch, yeah. right? Like we've been through so many of them. So I think it's sitting down with someone, first of all, knowing if they're knowledgeable within what the style of home, like what, yeah. what is included in a house, but at the same time, uh, and then also the market, understanding what's happening in the market so that they can uh, educate you on that, right? So you got to do a little bit of research probably online and then figure out, does that align with what realtors are saying and so forth? And uh, I think that's probably the biggest thing. I think a lot of times, they just um, find somebody online and just then go with that person, right? But I, I do think that you should interview a couple of different people to see if they, uh, they meet up to right. what you deserve. Buying or selling, I think that that's a good point. You know, it doesn't matter which way is it. There's, everybody does it a little bit differently in our industry, right? right. So I think it's just, uh, you know, just like with most things that I do, it's, it's finding all the appropriate information so I can make an educated decision. Right. Right. Yeah, and it's because once you once you build that relationship with that agent, then they're sticking it. It's you're a team again, as I mentioned, and so that you're sticking your sticking with it. Someone that also I, I think makes time for you. So I mean, for an example, like I think that you're the priority should go to the person that's looking to see the houses in the afternoon. So if someone's not around and they're not showing properties and so forth in, in today's market, if they don't have that time, move on to somebody else. Right. Because you're going to miss out on way too many properties. I think if you miss out on one property, start seeing why it happened. If it's two. But truthfully, if you're yeah. missing out on two properties, you know, and they're selling before you even get in. So you're probably like, you could almost think that each, each one that you miss is probably property values are probably going up $5,000. It you could know? be, yeah. Like just because that new house is the new comparable. Yeah. Right. And so if you're missing those things is that you're just costing yourself money. Yeah. In, in this market, right? Like we're dealing in a different time of where, you know, where real estate is and things are moving so quickly. That's the only reason why I, I say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the fifth? Well, I, once again, to the, to where this market's moving and how quickly things are moving is that I would say is it's probably selling your home before finding that next house, you know? Um, you know, right now is that we can, we're very confident in being able to say that we can sell these homes and we always look at the the high end and the low end and we make those you know to for our clients to make those educated decisions but once they we sell in this market and sometimes like you said you know hopefully all not all of our clients take two years but like it does take a little bit of time for to find that right house because it's not available on the market today yeah there's some people that i've been with for six months a year yeah. and so forth and i mean if you if someone would have sold their house i'd say in february of this year and let's say it was worth four hundred thousand then i'd say that house you could argue that same house now today in the end of October could probably be worth anywhere from 460, 470, maybe even above, depending on what it is and what location. In the right location. In the right location. And, and maybe move in ready. You yeah. know, like I think that makes a big difference is that things that are renovated and, and I think that that buying power is there for people that, in that situation. Yeah. Um, maybe not if it hasn't been renovated and no, but and those things, yeah. you know, just, just for perspective for, for, for perspective our consumers, yeah so right? if it, it's an amazing house that's probably seen about a 15 to 20 percent incline this year if it's not then it quite a bit less yeah i agree but you know like what like you said is that you're basically pricing yourself your buying power if you're selling first is your buying power is going down as property values are going up and then and then you're finding something that you don't love and then you're racing into something and you're renting right? which we have less than 1% vacancy rate. So it's like, it's not an easy situation for families to be in. And that's where we find a lot of our clients as yeah. well too, right? And uh, yeah, I guess, you know what, if there was even another one, it would be being patient, 
right? It's just being patient and, and making sure that you understand what the process is, where you're going to be able to find that perfect home, and then and then working towards it. Yeah. So I think that that's probably a big factor on that. And then once your house then sells, it, I mean, once you're, you find that property you buy, you've already pre, um, I guess you've already got your house ready for the last how many months, right? And so. Yeah. I actually, you know, on that note is that I would say that maybe, um, oh, lost my train of thought there. Well, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you interviewed someone uh, from Mecklenburg Financial Group, mm -hmm. um, I guess a, a couple of months ago, um, Cole Bommel, and uh, he was talking about some incentives for buyers. Yeah, the first time home savings, um, the FHSA, the first time home savings account, um, that would probably be another big one, especially for first time home buyers, is that to be able to, to not, to be able to have that as tax free and going directly as a down payment would, you know, would be another mistake. I think a lot of people especially first time home buyers would be would be making by well, not putting those in putting just because they account. don't even know about it of course yeah not many people know about that right yeah yeah so i mean these are probably the biggest things that we find i mean there's always a lot of different things that we think of and this could also these five biggest mistakes a home buyer can make might change depending on the market and For and sure. where you're at right so uh, if you're in Calgary or Vancouver, it could be totally different. But right now in Saskatoon, these are the five that we pulled up that we thought were the most important uh, and that will help you through your real estate journey, being able to find you that, that perfect home uh, or the best home within your price range, then to be able to move on to that next step in your life. So, yeah. Well, thanks again, Greg. This is always a treat having to Another conversation with my brother on a podcast here. <laughs> Thanks again for Dufferin Media. Um, you know, if you're looking for, if you have any ideas of different things that we can cover for educating, you know, our viewers out there, please feel free to drop, drop us a direct message. Um, obviously, our details are in the bottom there. Greg, do you have anything to add for? No, I just, uh, if you do need help, um, reach out to us. We'd be happy to, to do an evaluation on your property and then help you with the next step of figuring out what you're looking for on that buying side. So give us a call and we'd happily sit down with you and help you out. Great. Well, thanks again, Greg.